Hi. I'd like to discuss our work on compressive imaging via approximate message passing. This is joint work with Jintan and Yan Tingma. First, a quick overview of some applications of compressive imaging. Um, these applications could be, for example, in medical imaging, seismic imaging, and remote sensing. In the medical imaging application, we may want to speed up the imaging process so the patient gets less radiation. In seismic uh, types of applications, there's often a storage problem. There's a ton of data, and we want to reduce the amount of data. And finally, in remote imaging, often there's a satellite involved, and by transmitting less information to the ground, we'll be reducing the power consumption. The main idea in all of these applications is that we have an input signal X, which is really a, an image, but we vectorize it, and then we multiply that vector by a matrix A, adding additive noise Z, resulting in noisy measurements Y. We'd like to have a reconstruction procedure that goes from the noisy measurements Y to the original input signal X, which again is actually an image. To do so, the reconstruction algorithm knows, in addition to the noisy measurements Y, the measurement matrix A, and also the statistical distribution of the noise. As an example, consider uh, an image of this flower, which is a tulip. The image is of size 128 by 128, and we're going to take a 30% measurement rate, meaning that the number of measurements is 128 times 128 times 0.3. So after one iteration of our technique, which we're going to describe in detail later, you have a very coarse estimate. And then as you have more and more iterations, and here we're seeing 10 iterations and beyond, you get a better and better image. So how did we actually do that? How did we recover the image? The main idea is that we have a linear inverse problem, meaning that X was multiplied by A, we added noise, we get noisy measurements Y, and we want to recover X from Y. This is a compressed sensing problem. And we want to translate to a iterative denoising problem. And we do so using the approximate message passing approach. Now, it turns out that we used a very similar approach in related work. And you can check out my video on universal denoising and approximate message passing. So, Keep in mind that the main idea here, by converting from the compressed sensing problem to an iterative denoising problem, the image denoising problem allows us to go from noisy images to cleaner images. So how do we perform image denoising? We're going to illustrate with two examples. The first one is for two-dimensional images, and the second for hyperspectral imaging, which actually can be viewed as a three-dimensional image cube. In the 2D case, we have an original in image, and we apply a wavelet transform yielding wavelet coefficients. And the adaptive Wiener filter approach by Michak et al., it looks around that wavelet coefficient, and it looks at that coefficient and its neighbors in order to attempt to estimate the variance. So we compute variances based on the neighborhood, and then the adaptive Wiener filtering is applied to calculate the noisy wavelet coefficient. And then we take a reverse transform back to the image, and that's the image denoiser. Now, the next tool that we introduce is approximate message passing, or AMP. AMP iterates over the next three steps. Step one, calculate the residual, which is primarily the unexplained portion of the measurements. Y minus the matrix A multiplied by the estimate of the input signal x in iteration number t. And there's also a correction term which you can read about in our paper. The pseudo-data is the next step, the second step, and statistically it's equal to the original x plus noise, which happens to be Gaussian. And finally, the third step is denoising. We take the pseudo-data, we apply a denoiser a to t. And as you can imagine, eta t is our adaptive Wiener filter, and the output of that filter is the estimate of x in iteration t plus 1. Some numerical results. We took matrices that are iid 0 mean Gaussian. Our measurement rate, as before, was 0.3, and we averaged over 591 images. We consider 
the numerical results for four different algorithms were showing the normalized mean square error, the lower the better, and runtime in seconds. Again, the lower the better. TurboBG and TurboGM are works by Phil Schneider's group at Ohio State. Uh, they use a Bayesian-like approach. An MCMC approach by he and Karen is also quite good, but very slow. In contrast, our AMP Wiener algorithm, note that it's somewhat better than the other algorithms in terms of reconstruction, and additionally, it's four times faster. Now, not only that, but you can see that AMP, as the iterations proceed on the horizontal axis, the normalized mean square error, which is shown in the vertical axis, goes down. And actually, we showed results for 30 iterations, but even 15 iterations would be a fine result. So having surveyed our results for two-dimensional images, let's look at three-dimensional hyperspectral cubes. In a hyperspectral cube, you can imagine that we have an original image, which is really image information of a lot of different frequencies, and then we can actually show those different images at all of the different wavelengths. And we stack all of those images together into a cube. So the way how the hyperspectral imaging hardware works is that we have an operator, and the operator is an imaging process in hardware, which is applied to the 3D image cube, and having added noise, we get noisy 2D measurements. As before, the main idea is that we have a compressed sensing problem, and applying the approximate message passing, we convert it to a 3D image denoising problem. So let's take a look at our 3D denoiser. Here we use a sparsifying transform that we begin with the image cube and then it gives us sparse transform coefficients. And the sparsifying transform has two components. First of all, in the spatial dimensions we have two of those. We have a wavelet transform. And along the single spectral dimension we use a discrete cosine transform. Having applied the sparsifying transform, we again apply an adaptive Wiener filter. Uh, but we slightly modify it. We compute the variances of the wavelet coefficients, not for each of the coefficients based on its neighbors, but for each subband. And having estimated the variance per subband, we again, as before, apply a Wiener filter. And similar to before, after we've uh, basically denoised the transform coefficients, we take the inverse transforms and go back to the hypercube. Here's some numerical results. You can see in our different rows the ground truth, then the AMP Wiener result, which is our algorithm, and then results for two other algorithms, GPSR and twist. The columns correspond to different wavelengths, which are different colors. You can see that the AMP Wiener provides somewhat better results than the other two algorithms. For example, looking at the 488 nanometer frequency, we can see that there's some pattern on the Lego piece's shirt. And that pattern is somewhat preserved by AMP Wiener, whereas GPSR and Twist blur it to a much greater degree. So having discussed the 2D and 3D image denoisers, we can summarize. The main idea here is that we had an inverse problem, a compressed sensing problem, and we applied the approximate message passing approach to map it into an image denoising problem. Then we developed two types of adaptive Wiener filters for this problem, one of them in the 2D image case, the other for 3D hyperspectral cubes. We'd like to conclude with some information listing our research websites, our publications, and acknowledgements. Thank you for your attention.